So you want to be more social, that's what we're doing. There's a lot of social networks out there. It can be really overwhelming to know where to begin. Social media is all about user-generated content. Um, it's not a one-way conversation anymore. You're probably familiar with you know, the big networks of, you know, at least say Facebook, and you probably understand, um, you know, how it can be used personally. But the purpose of this webinar is to talk about how you can use social media with your organization, which I found that a lot of organizations don't know how to translate the fun, personal, social use of social media into an organizational strategy. Um, so think about it this way. Um, social media is you, you know, plus a lot of collaboration. Um, you know, so it's you and other people working together to find solutions. You're probably more attuned to social media um, than you think, even if you're not using these platforms. So, you know, think about your normal day. You know, what are things that you do? Um, you know, you read the paper every morning, probably when you get up, you read the news. Um, but, you know, with, with social news and social media, you don't just read the news anymore. You know, the news says hello to me in the morning. And then, you know, the news shows me um, what's popular and what my friends have been reading. Um, you know, and that's not really a new concept. You know, like if, if your friend or your colleague read a really good article, that's probably something they're going to share with you. You know, they'll say, oh, I read this really great article about something and tell you all about it. Same with all these. You know, this is the most popular articles. You can look at the most popular email, the most popular blog, the most popular search, the most popular viewed. Um, again, this isn't a new concept of sharing stuff that is interesting or, or sending articles. My mom still cuts articles out of the newspaper and, and mails them to me in the mail. Um, this is a new, new concept. This is just digitalizing this concept. You might drink coffee in the morning, but now your coffee places have a Facebook page and they want you to, you know, become a fan and they want you to enroll in perks for their company. Um, and maybe you have an app that shows you where your favorite coffee place is. You might listen to the radio on your way into work in the morning in the car, but we don't just listen to the radio anymore. Now we rank the radio and we tell it what songs we like and we create better listening playlists for other people so that they can listen to better music and they can have music recommended to them. You might go to a conference when you go to work, but we don't just go to conferences anymore. We watch them on live stream from our computer desks. Um, this was the Clinton Global Initiative that happened last week. The entire thing was live streamed. Um, you know, you could watch everything on video. You could watch last year's. They had clickable content on the sides. Um, you know, and, and they were talking about it on Twitter. So even though I wasn't there, I was able to interact with people who were there and um, or people who also weren't there could talk about it. So after work, you might eat dinner. But, you know, we don't just eat dinner anymore. We rate our dinners and we tell people what's good and we leave reviews. Um, and again, you know, that's not a new concept. You know, if you go to a restaurant and you have a really good meal, your inclination is to tell somebody about it. And there's apps, you know, if, if you're in a, a new city and you don't know where to go eat, but you know, uh, you know, I'm in the financial district and I want some, you know, Indonesian food at this kind of price, you know, it'll tell you a good restaurant based on others' recommendations and other suggestions. Um, you know, when you get home, you might watch TV. You know, maybe you want to watch a sports game that's on. Um, you know, but we don't just watch TV anymore. You can watch TV online. And, you know, people talk about it on Twitter so that you can interact with people, um, you know, that you're not with. You can talk about the game as though you were there watching it together. Same with TV shows. TV shows don't just exist on television anymore. They don't just have television ads anymore. Um, you know, they have websites and they have Facebook pages and they have Hulu pages because people aren't watching it live on TV. They're watching it at their convenience. Um, they have Twitter feeds, you know, so they can tell you about all their new stuff. They have YouTube pages so they can leave clips for you. Mad Men last year and then again this year they did a promotion. Um, it was as good as any uh, television ad or print ad that they could have done. They created this platform where you could madmen yourself and you essentially created a animated character in 60s era clothing, um, kind of the style of the show. Um, 
and everybody, you know, made them made one that looked like themselves and used it as their Facebook picture and their Twitter picture and they shared it on their blog and all this other stuff. And so everywhere you would go, you would see animated versions, animated 1960s versions of, of people that you kind of knew. Um, you know, and that was one of the best advertising campaigns they could have put together because it was everywhere, um, but it wasn't an ad just on television. You know, it allowed people to share it. Um, but so you might be thinking, okay, well, I don't have a television show and, you know, I don't run a sports program and I'm not putting out a conference, so how does this apply to me? So, you know, you know, in the past, people just gave to charity. They gave some money. Maybe they wanted a tax break. Maybe they liked a cause. You know, they gave blood. They, they donated ch items. Um, maybe they volunteered. And that was it. Um, you know, they did it because they wanted to. But now, um, you know, you can harness that kind of group think power um, into your charity. So just some examples of what um, other organizations are doing and, and some of them are this is a iPhone and Droid app called Cause World that we partner with. Um, you know, it's very much like Foursquare if you're familiar with that. Um, you know, you can check into places that you go. You can see Ann Taylor is listed and Tommy Bahama and you know a bunch of other places. You check in there and you just say that you're there. Um, and you get points, and or they're called karmas on this app. Um, and when you get enough, you can you basically give the, the points or the karmas over to different charities. The Girl Effect video, um, you know, another partner of ours, and they put together this video, and all it is is a YouTube video. They featured it on their site. They launched it at the Clinton Global Initiative. Well, they launched the second one at the Clinton Global Initiative. Um, but here, you know, this is a picture of my Twitter column. All these people are talking about it, you know, and you can see what people are saying about your topic. Um, this is a snapshot of the One Campaign's YouTube page. Um, you know, they do a really nice job with a video and short ad. The Humane Society has a nice Facebook page. They have all their state groups listed so you can find the one closest to you. Um, this is um, the, one of the Pepsi Refresh pages. We also work with, with Pepsi Refresh. They give you links to promote it. They give you a short URL. They give you a widget to place on your blog. Um, they give you an application so you can just have it on Facebook so that way other people are seeing it. This is another campaign um, that w revolved around Mother's Day actually earlier this year. You could send your mom a, a card and they use this interactive map um, which I just took a screenshot of to show where people were sending cards from. You know, so you could map where all the impact was coming from. Um, uh, another example, the Nature Conservancy has a really great, great Flickr page. You know, they have all these great pictures, and so they have people interact with them there because, um, you know, they had a photo contest and had people send them pictures. Um, and then, you know, just to go back to our site a little bit, you know, to show you where the social aspects are on our site. So, you know, this is one of our project pages. Um, you can see down at the bottom, um, you know, it says, you know, Allison McQuaid and Sarah Vaz and 50 other people like this. Um, you know, you can, we have these buttons, these social interaction buttons on our page. You can like your project. Um, you can see how many other people like it. It shows up in your Facebook feed. Um, on every page below your second donate button on the right, you also have these sharing tools, um, Facebook and um, Twitter and email, and then I think somewhere else you can show more of them as well. Um, you know, but it shows how many other people did. Also, when you make a donation, um, we give you an option to share that as well. Share it on Facebook. Tell somebody you just donated to this really great project. Look, Kevin just donated to this project, and I liked it. Um, you know, so now other people see that he made a donation. This is our um, Facebook page. Um, you know, we put news up there. We put some articles. Um, other people like to post to our page too. Um, you know, sometimes that helps us know if there's news out there that, um, you know, maybe if you put out a new YouTube video or something, you're having an event, if you post it on our page, we're bound to see it and we can share it with other people. You know, this is our, our Twitter page um, and, you know, it, we talk about new projects, we talk about news, we talk about um, news about our project, news about other things. Um, if we're going to a conference, we talk about that. Um, you know, lots of things go up there. Where do you start? Um, the first thing to identify is what are your objectives? Um, what does success look like for your organization? Um, and you might have different 
um, you might have different uh, levels of this. You know, you might have a, a short-term goal, and then you might have a long-term goal, and that's great. Um, you know, you might want to make it gradual in, in how you're defining your success, because it's not going to happen overnight. Is your audience already on a network? Um, you know, if, if you know that they are, find them there. Um, does your organization specialize in a media that has its own network? And then also, does your country or region have its own popular network? Then, you know, you need to think about choosing a name. Um, and maybe you already have, maybe you haven't, we're going to go over just some brief bullet points. Um, do make it your organization's name, um, unless, of course, your organization name is hard to spell, um, hard to pronounce. Don't use an acronym unless it's well known or short. Um, people won't really remember it and you want people to be able to interact with you easily. Um, if you can't use your name, um, use a word or a phrase that uh, describes what you do. So maybe a children's hospital, they might be um, healthy kids or something like that. Um, you know, so if you can't do your name, um, think about something that also describes what you do. Um, or, you know, you could include your, your city or your country if you're local to that region. And make sure you can use that same name on other networks. Don't misspell or leave letters off of words in your name um, unless it's actually part of your organization's name.